Does the Glock MOS system suck? Coming up. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and today we are going to talk about the modular optics system on the Glock line of pistols. Now, the MOS system has been out for quite some time, and uh, those of us that are kind of stuck in the Glock ecosystem were really stoked when it originally came out. Now, what the modular optic system is, is when you purchase a MOS pistol from Glock, uh, it comes out of the box with a standard slide plate on it. So it looks just like a regular non-MOS Glock, except it has two screws and what is obviously a removable plate in front of your rear sight. The rear sight is also a little bit closer to the back of the slide uh, than it is on a non-MOS gun. Uh, in addition to that, inside the actual case with the gun, you will get a package that has four different slide mounting plates, a couple of screws, and an Allen wrench on it, or I'm sorry, a Torx wrench, uh, in order to remove the uh, screws in the plate and replace it with one of those optics adapter plates. Now, that in itself is pretty cool because if you're getting into handguns, you don't know if you're sold on the optics thing or not, or you want to try it out, or you don't know what optic you want to buy, uh, then you can purchase the MOS version handgun. You can try out a couple of different optics until you figure out what you want to settle on, uh, and then you are set. You don't have to worry about, well, do I need to start with uh, the optic that requires the smallest mounting point and then go larger than that so they can mill it out? Well, what if I decide I want something different later on? With the MOS plates, you can swap out a variety of different plates for a variety of different optics. And if something new comes along the line later on, uh, because of the number of Glock MOS guns that are out there, someone will probably produce an adapter plate that allows you to mount it. A good example of that is with the Aimpoint Acro. Uh, when the Acro came out, it came out well after the Glock MOS system, and so they were fairly quick to provide a mounting solution that allow you to put the Acro on uh, to an MOS handgun. We somewhere around here have a Glock 19 with an Acro mounted on it. Uh, so that is really great, but if you do any amount of searching on the internet, you will find a lot of haters for the Glock MOS platform. Uh, now, some of those are from first-hand experiences. Uh, some of them are just uh, riding the wave because for some reason people love to hate Glocks. Um, I don't know if it's just an underdog complex or what it is, but uh, Glocks are one of the most popular combat pistols out there. Uh, so some people, you know, just kind of like to hate on them. They're a big target. But uh, there are some things that really are just not that great about the Glock MOS platform. Now, I have used it for uh, concealed carry for a very long time. I've used it for competition for a while. And uh, most recently, I've used it for duty use for a while. Uh, now, the big benefit in a duty environment uh, is more than likely you are already done the optic selection. You know what optic is going to go on the gun, uh, so you don't have to worry about being able to switch up with a variety of different optics. Although, if for some point later on an agency switches over and adopts a different optic, it is nice to have the ability to swap out the plates and not have to remill guns. Uh, but the main thing that we're looking at here is a liability slash warranty issue when you're looking at it from the agency standpoint. Uh, if you are just using replaceable plates that came with the gun, then it's not going to be a warranty issue. Uh, if something breaks on the gun, if you have a slide crack, something of that nature, uh, then it's going to go back to Glock. They're going to make it right. You're going to get the gun back and keep on going. Uh, if the worst happens and an officer is injured while shooting it uh, because of a failure on the gun, Again, that's not an issue that the agency is going to eat itself. There is going to be some recourse because uh, that would have been a failure of a factory handgun. 
Now, if you go have Joe Bob's milling mill out your slides to uh, install, and I don't know if there actually is a Joe Bob's milling, I'm just using it for an example. Uh, but if you have some guy mill it out in his uh, garage and mount an optic on it, and there's a failure later on, um, you're just going to eat that failure. Uh, there's no recourse there. Uh, and furthermore, if you have a failure elsewhere that maybe wasn't related to the milling, but could possibly be, uh, then you're probably going to eat the whole gun because Glock may decide not to cover it under warranty. So from an agency standpoint, it's better to have a factory solution, and that's one of the reasons that we adopted the MOS guns for our optics-equipped handguns uh, at my agency instead of having uh, the slides milled out, among other reasons, because we were using Glock 21, and now we're using the 41, and there are holster issues there that we won't get into. But... I will use the MOS and the Trigicon RMR or Trigicon SRO as an example of the not so great version of the MOS. Now the RMR is one of the, uh, probably the king right now of handgun combat optics, not competition optics, not whatever of combat optics. It is supremely durable. We have beaten them up. Um, that is really my preference right now for duty and concealed carry as an optic. Uh, recently, I have been uh, working with the Trigicon SRO, uh, which has some benefits over the RMR, has some drawbacks over the RMR, but the footprint uh, that mounts the optic on the gun is the same. So we're talking about them interchangeably here. Now, with the factory MOS plate, when you mount the RMR on it, you select the correct plate for the RMR, you actually have gaps around it. Uh, now, there are two studs that are formed into the plate itself, uh, so you would screw that plate onto the slide uh, with the provided screws, and then you have to purchase a kit from Trigicon that has a sealing plate and two special screws specifically for the MOS system uh, to mount the RMR on, because the included screws with the RMR are actually too long. If you put them through, it'll jack up the rear of the RMR plate and you'll have all kinds of problems. Uh, you need the sealing plate because the RMR mounting plate is actually too thin to fully seal the RMR and make it weather resistant. So you have to buy those plates, uh, you have to buy those accessories, uh, and then once you screw everything on, you have a gap around the RMR. Uh, so it sits flat on the plate, uh, it screws in, it's held by those two studs, uh, but there is a gap front and back. Um, not only is this not aesthetically pleasing, uh, but this also doesn't give the optic full support. And when we are uh, teaching in our optics equipped handgun classes, we are doing a lot of manipulation with the optic itself. Uh, no matter if it's just malfunction clearing drills, or if it's one-handed manipulations where we're racking the slide on a barricade, racking it on the holster, racking it on the belt. Um, when we do injured shooter drills, we do a lot of racking off the optic because it is the highest profile portion of the slide. It's the easiest thing to get a hook on. Uh, my RMR has started to get uh, nice and scratched up uh, around the edges on it because of that. But because you're putting a lot of force on the optic and sometimes you're putting more force than you get from the slide reciprocating on the optic, it's nice to have the optic set down and supported front and rear. Uh, the Trigicon RMR and the SRO has a forged aluminum housing, uh, so it's a fairly heavy duty housing and I would prefer to have the force transmitted through the housing into the slide uh, versus transmitted through these small screws that are holding the optic onto the slide. So that is really uh, one of the big issues because they tried to make the plates somewhat universal. Uh, they're not a tight fit on anything. Uh, so there we end up going to aftermarket plates like the CNH Precision plate that I actually have on this uh, 34 MOS here that provides a very snug fit for the optic to mount down into the plate. Uh, if you were to mill a standard 34, 19, 17 slide, whatever, for uh, RMR, a lot of companies out there require that you send them your RMR with the slide so that they can make the pocket 
a perfect cut for that RMR. It seems less companies are doing that now. Now they're getting uh, very close. Uh, the last couple of slides that I've had, when you fit the RMR down in there, you almost scrape a little bit of anodizing when you seat the RMR in there. So it's a very tight fit, uh, which is nice, which I want to see. That way, when the slide's racking back and forth, the optic isn't moving anywhere because it doesn't have anywhere to go. It's almost a press fit into the top of the slide. So that is the big thing, the fit of the optic in the adapter plate. Uh, but then we have a second issue. Because we are adding another piece in the system, uh, we have an adapter plate and we have two screws that go into the adapter plate and then we have the optic and we usually have two screws that go through the optic into the adapter plate. Uh, so that really changes where the screws can go for the adapter plate in the MOS system uh, and it moves where the optic is on the top plate, but then the other problem is you have another set of fasteners that actually can rust underneath your primary fasteners. So when we're dealing with uh, most of the optics on the MOS system, the optic actually sits on top of the screws that are holding the MOS plate to the slide and then you put screws down through the optic to hold it to that. That means through regular maintenance, you never actually see the screws that are holding the plate uh, down to the slide. Now, with a gun that is uh, kept in a duty holster where it's covered, um, it may get rained on a little bit, but it's not exposed to that uh, really acidic, salty sweat that we get for concealed carry. Uh, you may go a little bit longer without seeing this, but what I noticed on my personal gun uh, that is an MOS that I conceal carry regularly is those MOS plate screws actually rusted really severely. Uh, when I pulled off the RMR in order to change its battery and pulled up the ceiling plate below it, uh, there was a considerable amount of rust on those fasteners. In fact, it was rust to the point where I felt the need uh, to replace them instead of just clean them. That way I didn't have to worry about them stripping out later on. Now there are ways to mitigate that when you put on the MOS mounting plate. I will usually use green Loctite to glue the plate to the top of the slide. Uh, put those screws down through there with the pre-applied blue Loctite that comes on them. Torque them down to hold the uh, the MOS plate on. And then I will use green Loctite on top of those screw heads now uh, to kind of seal the screw heads and give them a little bit of weather protection uh, before I put on the sealing plate for the RMR and then mount the RMR on top of that. And of course the RMR screws, they have blue Loctite pre-applied. Uh, you will probably start to get some surface rust uh, on the fasteners of the uh, RMR if you don't uh, keep them oiled occasionally. Uh, but those you can see, and you can see when it's starting to get out of hand, the screws underneath you cannot. Uh, and because you are probably only removing the optic once a year, uh, when you go through those really hot summers where you're sweating on your gun regularly, you may run into some corrosion problems. So that is another reason I dislike it. Uh, with a standard slide like the Zev slide that we have here that is actually milled out for an optic, and this has an RMR cut on it. It happens to have a Holosun optic on it right now. This is the HS507C optic. Uh, which is a really, really great optic. If you're not stepping up to RMR level, then this is a uh, really good to go optic. Uh, but when I have it mounted on here, there are no screws underneath. The screws that you see are the screws that are holding the optic directly to the slide. There are no adapter plates, none of that stuff. Uh, so if I notice that these screws on here are starting to rust out, then I can just remove the screws, discard them, replace them, I'm good to go. I don't get any nasty surprises uh, when I do my full breakdown or my full armors inspection on the gun. Uh, with the MOS plates, you just have to basically prepare yourself for nasty surprises and I now have a box of screws uh, for the MOS plates uh, sitting here. That way as soon as I start to see rust on them uh, I can chuck them and replace them with new screws. So that for me is the primary issue. Now some users have found that uh, during shooting the MOS plates work loose or loosen up. Um, I think 
Part of that is more of an installation issue. Uh, for me, what I will do is I will put the MOS plate on. I will Loctite the MOS plate to the slide. So I'll take green Loctite, which is a bearing adhesive Loctite. Uh, and there's a center rib down the MOS um, cut on the slide. And I'll run Loctite down that center rib, uh, drop the plate on. So now that I'm actually gluing the plate uh, to the slide. And the green Loctite is designed to uh, fill spaces. Uh, so it should take up a lot of the extra air gap in between those plates. Uh, then of course, again, the screws that Glock includes have blue Loctite pre-applied. So we go ahead and screw those in and I will torque them to 15 inch pounds. Now I went through the Glock Armors course and throughout that course, they never mentioned an actual torque spec for the MOS mounting plate screws. Um, I also have not been able to find anything in the Glock manuals, anything online or nothing official. Uh, but if I go to Holochrome's website, uh, which is the company I purchased the replacement screws from, and I look up the uh, M3 screw size that we use for this, uh, they quote 1.85 newton meters because it is a metric screw, so they quote it in uh, metric torque. Uh, but since most of our torque tools here are in inch pounds, uh, that converts over to about 16.37, somewhere in there. So 16 inch pounds of torque. Uh, so I will do it to 15 inch pounds. That still makes sure that we are uh, well clear of the uh, yield strength of those screws. Uh, I don't want to strip anything out, strip heads, or uh, tear up the actual uh, threads in the slide. Uh, so 15 inch pounds, uh, you're going to be good to go. Uh, now, make sure you understand that is inch pounds, not foot pounds. Do not mix the two up. Uh, if you get foot pounds, you're going to strip things, you're going to break things. So 15 inch pounds is about what I would recommend. And then I will cover the tops of those screw heads with green Loctite. Uh, and then I will go ahead and put the optic or whatever other plate on there. Um, that way I know that the plate is basically glued to the slide. Uh, you shouldn't really be removing that plate every time you maintain the gun. Uh, the only time I would actually pull that plate off uh, is if it gets loose, then go ahead and take that opportunity to remove the screws, pull the plate off, and check for corrosion between the plate and slide. Or if I start to notice that I'm uh, getting any rust seepage uh, between the plates. I have not experienced that yet, even on the gun that uh, started to rust out the screws. I still didn't have any issues between the plate and the slide. Uh, but if you notice that, definitely take it off, clean it up, put it back on. Um, but during your regular inspection, if you pull the optic off and the plate is still tight on there, I don't see any reason to actually remove it again. And then of course, when you install your optic, install your optic based upon the optic manufacturer's installation instructions. There's a wide variety of hardware that they're using out there. Uh, so I don't want to tell you a specific torque spec and have too small of a head and then have that twisted off. So that is my overall opinion on how to minimize issues uh, with the MOS system. Um, the guns that I have that have the MOS system on them, I don't see a need to go and replace that. Uh, however, if I have the option for a personally owned weapon, um, I will go with a direct optic cut to be able to install the optic on there. Now, one last thing that I find incredibly useful uh, with the MOS system is, for instance, this is uh, my competition handgun slash um, duty training handgun, uh, since it's basically a 9mm version of uh, the 45 ACP that I carry on duty. I like the fact that on this, if I want to try out another optic, uh, maybe it's something I'm evaluating for uh, the ability to use it on the streets, uh, then I can swap out the plate, I can swap the optic on, I can run the optic. If the optic fails out, if it's not a good option, whatever, then I can ditch it. I can put a different plate on, put a different optic on. I don't have to have a pile of slides laying around uh, to be able to test various optics. Now, I really would like to see the optics world standardize on the RMR cut. 
uh, that would just make life easier. Thankfully, uh, Hollow Sun uses the RMR cut for the vast majority of its handgun optics. Uh, there are a few other companies out there as well that have gone with the RMR cut, uh, but you still have uh, other weird ones popping up from time to time that require uh, their own cut. Uh, and then you have things like the uh, Aimpoint App Pro that just wouldn't work on an RMR cut. So there you have its own thing as well. Uh, so I like the fact that I can swap it out to try different things. And again, if you're one of the guys that likes to run the latest and greatest optic that comes out, uh, then the MOS may be a great uh, purpose for you or maybe a great option for you. Um, if you are a law enforcement agency, then the MOS is probably the way to go for you uh, just to be able to uh, justify things uh, if things go sideways and to be able to maintain that manufacturer support and that manufacturer warranty. Um, but uh, if you are a private citizen uh, and you know you want to go with an RMR on a Glock 19 or Glock 17 or something like that, um, then I would say buy the standard handgun, uh, send it out, have the slide milled for that optic by a reputable company, uh, and then gas on with it. If at some point in time down the road, for whatever reason, your slide cracks, uh, Glock slides have gotten to the point where they are fairly inexpensive, or uh, you have the option, of course, of just buying an aftermarket slide like the Zev slide that I have here. Grey Ghost offers quite a few. Um, several other companies out there offer complete aftermarket slides that already have the optic cut uh, that you want to have in them. And you can get cool things like these forward slide serrations and all this other stuff. One final word on the Glock MOS. Um, you will have to replace your iron sights uh, in order to get it co-witnessed if you want to run co-witnessed iron sights, which is my recommendation for any site that is solely battery powered. Uh, batteries do tend to die and they very often die at the worst possible time. The MOS pistols come with plastic sights, which are pretty horrible. Um, they, they work if you have absolutely no money for sights. Um, but they need to be replaced, and replacing them with something like uh, the Ameriglow uh, sights that I have here that are just plain iron sights is relatively inexpensive. But plan that when you put an optic on an MOS gun, uh, it will render the factory sights pretty much useless. The optic will sit too high to be able to use those sights. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And that's going to do it for my rambling overview of the Glock MOS system. Uh, it's not horrible. It's not as good as it could be, uh, but it is somewhere in between. And uh, for what it is, it works fairly well for me. I have not had a failure in competition or a failure in the field, uh, but it's because I... Uh, use those little tips that I mentioned uh, to keep the thing up and running. So that's it for this video. If you guys have any questions or comments over anything I've covered, please drop it in the comment section down below or send it to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to know how to support the content that you know and love, please come check us out over on Patreon. And until next time, get out and shoot!